Hello there, my Raider Tropical Weather Group, Dr. David Erglicki here. And today we're gonna to be talking about hurricane rapid intensification, which is something I have mentioned before, but we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into it. But before we begin, just to remind you, if you are on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you're notified when we post new videos, and be sure to give our channel a thumbs up. It really does help the channel out. Now, before we dive into rapid intensification, we have to talk about what it actually is numerically. So when a forecast on the National Hurricane Center or I say rapid intensification, what we mean here is 30 knot increase in intensity over 24 hours. So what this histogram is showing you is that over the entirety of all hurricanes from 1850 to the present, what is their 24 hour intensity change? And I'm gonna circle here 30 and minus 30. So when, they, when we talk about rapid intensification, it really is a statistical artifact. So if you do a, a probability of all of these, what we're looking at here is just the tails. So 95% of all intensification happens here between minus 25 knots and 25 knots. And you can see most of the time in 24 hour t intensity change, it's zero. So what we're gonna be talking about here are the tails. So basically everything from 30 knots and down, and this is rapid intensification. So to demonstrate rapid intensification, at least what it looks like on satellite imagery, we're gonna talk about Hurricane Michael from 2018. And Michael's important because it's one of only three category five landfalls that occurred in the United States in the past 70 years. So as we look towards the satellite imagery, this starts from Hurricane Michael's genesis, and the color here is we're looking at infrared satellite imagery. So we're gonna to start to see all these clouds forming. If we stop right here, we'll see it start to cross uh, Cuba, actually in between Cuba and Mexico. And if we stop right here, you can start to see these clouds encircling the eye. And we're also seeing right here, minus 80 degrees to minus 90 degrees Celsius. So these are really intense convective towers and they're working their way all the way around the center. So for rapid intensification on satellite imagery, this is usually what you wanna see. You wanna see really intense, really cold cloud tops and see them encircling the eye. And that's really what's most important here. Now, if we move forward, we're gonna to start to see something, we're gonna see an eye develop. And you can see, if we pause just a second, you'll see it's starting to struggle here. So we still have clouds all the way around, but we're still struggling, uh, struggling to clear out the eye here. There's still clouds in there. So it's, Michael is still on its way to figuring things out. Another interesting thing to take a look at here are these striations in the satellite imagery. And this has to do with the outflow from the storm. And this is just a product when a storm goes through this process, throws out a lot of outflow, and you get these striations in the cloud shield. So as we keep moving forward, eventually you're gonna see Michael start to clear out its eye. And if we stop right here, we're gonna see all this cloud, all these cold clouds encircling the eye. This is what is known as the central dense overcast or CDO. So if you ever see a discussion that talks about a CDO or something like this, that's what this is. They're talking about the whole cloud shield that is surrounding the tropical storm. Now, eventually as we keep going, we're gonna see Michael clear out a pretty intense eye. If we pause right here, you see a very, very intense, very clear eye that's here. And so right now, this is Michael at a category five. So this effect where you have this, uh, you don't always need a large eye, but when you see this very clear eye surrounded by very cold cloud temperatures, this is how you know this is a very intense tropical cyclone. And then Michael subsequently made landfall as a category five. So aboard current geostationary satellites, that allows us the capability to actually take a deeper dive into tropical cyclones. And this is what we're gonna be looking at is called a mesosector. So this allows us to refresh the imagery every single minute, which is generally pretty cool. Now the appeal of this is that we can actually see convective features wrapping around the eye and expanding in the outflow in near real time in definition we've never been able to see before. Now if we zoom in just a little bit more, we can actually see when Michael makes landfall and we see the track of this and this gives us unprecedented capabilities to figure out exactly where and when these hurricanes are gonna be making landfall. So we've been looking at primarily infrared satellite imagery. And infrared gives you an idea of usually what's going on with the cloud shield and cloud top temperatures. So as we jump to the visible satellite imagery, 
This allows us to see something completely unprecedented, and we can actually start to see swirls in the eye. Now, these are a bunch of interesting features. Uh, they can be mesoward as he's in some storms, or more likely what is known as a hub cloud. So the eye isn't exactly completely clear. They're these clouds that exist at very low levels, and they're known as hub clouds. And these new satellites allow us to see the evolution of these inner eye features with a resolution and a frequency we were never able to see before. So beyond geostationary satellite imagery, there is another tool that forecasters use. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's really important. And something I wanna talk about I think is really interesting. So what we're looking at here is Hurricane Michael, and this is the Yucatan Peninsula, and this is Cuba. And what we're looking at here is microwave satellite imagery, and in particular, 37 gigahertz. Now, what microwave satellite imagery allows us to do is actually peer beneath the cloud shield and see what's going on with precipitation patterns underneath the cloud shield in the center of the hurricane. So even before Michael was rapidly intensifying, what this 37 gigahertz shows us is that this cyan ring is basically showing that precipitation at low levels has wrapped its way all the way around the core. Now there's another frequency that we use with tropical cyclones and that is 87 gigahertz or 87 to 91 depending on the satellite. But what this is all about is ice scatterers. So you can see there are two big convective bursts here and the, and the temperature here is uh, brightness temperature uh, as perceived by the satellite. So what this allows you to do is actually see deep down into the storm that you wouldn't get before from just geostationary satellite imagery. So hurricane forecasters and hurricane analysis uh, people generally use these two in tandem to figure out how a storm is evolving. The downside of microwave satellite imagery is that because they're in a different orbit from the geostationary, this is uh, very sporadic. You don't get a full view like the geostationary. So this is one of those you take when you can get it. Well, I think we'll wrap up this video, and I just want to remind you that if you check the description, we will put links to some of these uh, imagery. So obviously this was a historical case with Hurricane Michael, but a lot of this stuff is shown in real time. So those links will provide you to locations where you can analyze this stuff in real time. And you can do your own tracking and intensification analyses. Once again, this is Dr. David Roglicki, thanking you very much for watching, and happy hunting. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.